Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation to Portugal FinTech Association. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think most of you know me. I'm Gonçalo. I work for Visa, uh, country manager in Portugal. Basically, I look after our clients, uh, the market, and uh, you know all the relationships we have uh, in the country. Um, basically, today I have 10 minutes. So, being honest, I'm going to stick to the basic, and I'm going to tell you um, a few examples, uh, the trends. Um, what are the, the, the use cases which we will be able to see in the immediate future and I think what's coming next on, on, on embedded finance. Um, the invitation uh, is actually, um, I think, comes at the right time because embedded finance is becoming part of our days more and more and more and we will see that during the presentation. So actually, um, I, start, I decided to start with a few examples because, you know, instead of uh, trying to explain you this uh, with concepts or theories, I, I prefer to give you practical examples. I think that probably works better for everyone. And of course, I think everyone associates embedded finance with payments and lending, but there's more into it. I would say payments, quite obvious examples, wallets, uh, which we use to pay on our day to day. Basically, we are using a, a, a technology, a service, I don't know even what to call it, where we embed the credential from our bank, and we are using that service to pay. So it's a, it's a great example. But also, you know, virtual credentials for B2B payments. Uh, it's also, I can give you a practical example. For instance, when Booking.com pays the hotels in Portugal for the bookings that uh, they got from tourists, they receive via a card. And this is a B2B card. So uh, another example of embedded payments. And finally, payment acceptance. At the end of the day, that's, that's exactly what 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 it is um, so actually when i'm buying in a merchant i'm doing the payment it's embedded finance uh, it's pretty basic and it has been there for many times but it's actually embedded finance and then lending which the best use case of course is a buy now pay later i think it's a great example on how you know something simple digital that i can access credit in 10 seconds just providing basic information basic data and this works for the merchant works for the consumer and actually works for the for the bank. So a great example, both on consumer side, but now it's a new trend coming also on the small business side. Um, then, um, actually, what we are seeing more and more is integrated lending in virtual platforms. Um, from, and this is mostly for companies. I would say a basic a basic case, which we were just discussing uh, before uh, the session, is when I buy a house when I, you know, go and check all the websites that I can try to find a house to buy, there will be, I'm sure, a lot of information about mortgages and, you know, banks and all of that. And that has been there for a, for a long time. I think the difference is today I can, instead of getting a lead, I can complete the full process. Probably we are not there yet uh, and I, can, it's, I cannot contract for sure a mortgage uh, through embedded finance but I can make, let's say, all the process until I get an approval, and then I can actually sign the escritura to make sure we, we, got the, we get the house. Um, and then again, uh, embedded issuance, um, you know, I think, great example in Portugal, Coverflex. Um, you know, basically, I'm, uh, it's, well, Coverflex facil facilitates employee benefits. And uh, actually, it's embedded into their proposition to issue a card credential that allows for payments to happen. It's a great use case. It's um, actually growing and growing and growing more in Europe, uh, more and more cases like this. Then embedded deposits. This is something that probably none of us have thought too much. <clears throat> but actually, we have SMBs and, and, um, and some companies um, getting financial services, lending, and, and also deposits through distributors. This is a use case that has already been presented, for instance, by Tokyo in Spain, actually allows you to access credit and deposits. Um, and they have done a partnership with a, a distributor of drinks. Actually, it's beer. And uh, it's a great case where because everyone wins. So basically, the merchant gets access to credit from someone that understands their business, from someone that um, really gets shares information. And, 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 you know, the, the company, the, the enabler is actually benefiting because they will have more sales and it will have a sticker relationship. I think this is another aspect of embedded finance that um, it's, the, it's really important to highlight. 
is that embedded finance allows you know, companies that offer it to create more stickiness with consumers or, um, merch, or, sorry, or SMBs. Um, because actually it's not, a, it's not only a one-time relationship, actually you are building multiple relationships based on something that you were not expecting. I think it's the delight effect that uh, we need to, to highlight. And then great use cases, uh, we are also discussing just before starting uh, embedded insurance. When we travel, uh, of course, we are offered an insurance. When we buy a mobile phone, we are offered an insurance, you know, or uh, any, other, any other feature services like concerts or shows or whatever. And then an, an, a new use case, which is embedded wealth management, uh, which I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it, uh, but it's, uh, it's actually another way of selling more financial products, in this case, the investments. Um, I think, you know, three trends. Basically, um, we have trend one, which is payment solutions are become, uh, becoming more deeply uh, embedded and integrated into merchant ecosystems. Actually, one key aspect is that merchants are designing all the, the payment experience and lending experience themselves. They are not trusting these two third parties. They have decided to build themselves the, 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 this, this uh, structure because it's a key moment. It's the moment of truth. Do I purchase or not? If I, had, if I don't have a great experience and if I, I'm not able to complete the payment, then you know, there will be no transaction. So merchants actually are taking control of this part, at least the big ones. Uh, for sure, we will see more and more of this. Um, you know, and of course, the demand for insecure embedded finance lending continues to grow. Um, I'm sure all by now, pay later companies, probably some of them are, are in the room, are partnering with merchants online and now also in stores. Um, we see uh, the example, for instance, of Parcela Jao with Unicre as a great example of, of, uh, of this trend. Um, and finally, um, you know, white label embedded finance payment solutions, get, you know, gaining momentum. And this is due to the fact that the smaller retailers, the smaller merchants don't have the resources, don't have the time to embed on, 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 on building uh, an embedded finance or, or partnering or, or they don't have scale to partner with banks. So at the end of the day, what they do is they go into white level. So this is actually the future. Uh, there will be APIs, small retailers online will connect with the providers and embedded finance will be actually not only in big retailers, but everywhere. And this is something we can, we can already see, for instance, with Klarna uh, partnering with small retailers. It's a great example uh, of embedded finance being everywhere and actually accessible to everyone. And, and, and definitely this is a, a very important topic. Um, you know, I would love to spend more time uh, talking about the, the value chain and the ecosystem. Unfortunately, there's no time for this, but uh, I think we can leave it for, for the next speaker, speakers. <coughs> then, you know, what's, what's in it for, for, for the different uh, participants of the value chain? I think this is the key aspect. So, of course, for the end users, uh, they gain access to financial services, you know, across channels they frequently interact. And it's, it's a, an experience that actually has been designed for them when they are experiencing some uh, moments of truth, as, as I've said. Um, so basically, consumers or businesses uh, will get the financial services they need uh, at a reduced cost and a low risk and a great speed and transparency. Um, in terms of the, the distribution channels, you know, the, or the, dis, the distributors, basically these are uh, the entities, uh, and, and then I've just given some examples of white label, but uh, this can be um, actually uh, some other market platforms or super apps or independent software, so software vendors, the so-called ISVs, that basically allow the bank to connect to the consumers using an enabler. And the enabler is, at the end of the day, uh, the entity that is providing access to their client base to financial services. In this case, it could be a merchant, it could be you know, a travel agency, it could be a company selling uh, concerts or shows or tickets or whatever. And finally, the provider, which is the bank. So the one that decides the credit risk, the one that has the banking license, and the one that, you know, that um, can uh, definitely decide on, 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 the, on, the, um, on the risk policy and actually makes the most revenue that shares uh, with, with, um, with the enabler and the distribution channels. So I think in terms of the future, and knowing that I only have 44 seconds, uh, <laughs> let me tell you that embedded finance for sure will accelerate. And as I said in the beginning, it's already part of our uh, days and will become more and more and more. And will be, I think, embedded 
everywhere, as João rightly said. Um, I think payments and lending are the most known use cases, but more and more will grow. Um, ISVs and platforms will help to accelerate distribution, which is basically the idea I've given about a small retailer that you know is uh, in the Algarve selling, uh, let's say, wine or running shoes or whatever you want to call it, and can actually, um, you know, link with uh, merchants. Uh, sorry, with consumers that are in Portugal or everywhere in Europe, and actually they can have buy now pay later solution, for instance, that can be international. So it's a great example um, uh, of, of um, how uh, ISVs can get help to get to the small merchants. Finally, let me tell you that, uh, you know, this is not, not only about uh, card payments. Uh, there will be many to many networks and this will be connect many different means of payment, not only card. Uh, and of, of course, uh, we want card to be the most preeminent one, but this will be open to, to all means of payment. Uh, and uh, I think a final message, and I know there are, there are a lot of colleagues from the, from the banks in the room. Um, I think it's time for us to think how we're going to tackle this and how we're going to work in partnership with the other players. Because, you know, we have to think it in a way that protects um, the existing business from the traditional players. Otherwise, what we will have more and more and more is disruption. And for sure, this is not, uh, you know, what you guys want. So. Clearly, the challenge, I think, is we need to work in collaborative innovation. We need to work together. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of good things for everyone in the ecosystem. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you.